Alright, welcome to hack number 35. It's the Guitar Tremolo Effects Box. Pretty simple build on an LM386 amplifier and a 555 timer chip. And if you follow along the video, you'll learn how to build one too. This is a photo resistor, uh, also known as a photo cell. And they vary in resistance depending on how much light is striking them. So you can see in full light here, I'm reading 7.78K ohms. And if I take my bright white LED here and shine it directly into that photoresistor, it drops down as low as about uh, 220 ohms something like that. And if I cover it up entirely with my finger, put it in total darkness, well, near total darkness, it goes all the way up to 6K. Okay, let's take a look at the breadboard and what we've got going on here. Essentially on this big breadboard is a LM386 amplifier, a little audio amplifier on a chip. I've uh, done that before in one of my previous hacks and I need this because this circuit when you run it through here tends to attenuate the signal quite a bit so we need to have this to really warm up the signal give it a little boost for what we're doing here over here on this board is a 555 timer set up in an A stable mode and I've got a potentiometer here so I can change the pulse width that's coming out of the 555 pin 3 as I turn it up you see the LEDs flash a little faster, and as I slow down, they go slower. Now what's going on between these two here is over here I have a NPN transistor acting as a inverter. So it's a not gate, basically, when its input is low, the output goes high, and vice versa. So over here, this is coming right off from pin 3 and it's staying on most of the time and then blinking off so the good majority of its uh, duty cycle is on and I inverted it to where it's mostly off and it just comes on for a short duration there's a reason I did this this is the photoelectric cell encased in a little piece of plastic that I had left over from an old power supply it's just a, a cylinder of plastic and I can place it over this one or this one for the demonstration and because I have this actually connected over here to the audio signal chain there's quite a bit of buzz going on because this is not shielded oh one more thing too by the way this potentiometer here goes from what's called wet to dry on the signal uh, dry being just the signal coming through with no effects wet being the signal 100 percent uh, running through the effects unit and then making its way to the amp. So let me turn up the amp. You'll hear some 60 hertz background buzz from this. As I touch it, you'll hear that happen. There's my tone without any effect. So here it is on the one that's duty cycle mostly on. Let's turn the speed up just a little bit. So you hear what's happening is it's mostly no tone coming through. Every time the light goes out, the tone gets to come through. So most of the time we don't have tone. So I didn't like that much. That's why I did this inverted circuit here. This is a lot better. It's mostly on and then drops out the tone. And then on the uh, wet dry knob, I can blend it in. So there's 100% dry, no effect. That's 100% wet, nothing but effect. You can hear the attenuation in the signal, it's quite a bit. That, compared to that, quite a bit. So, we'll start out 100% wet, bring in a little bit of the signal. a 
pretty nice balance. Now let's give it a little more speed. We have a nice kind of a phaser effect, which is also doubling as kind of a tremolo. Let's go 100% wet here. Pretty cool, huh? Let's take a look at the schematic. You saw what it does on the breadboard. Now we'll look at it here with all of the symbols and circles and arrows and stuff. Here's the 555 timer in an A-stable configuration with the 100 ohm resistor there, a 10K pot there that varies the duty cycle. There's a 100 microfarad cap there. And out of pin 3 comes that pulse as determined by the setting of this 10K pot. And it runs through a 1K uh, resistor goes over to this NPN transistor. This is a BC547. This uh, serves as an inverter. This is a positive voltage and as I mentioned and demonstrated I wanted to invert that signal so I do it through this NPN transistor. It goes to the LED, gets picked up by the uh, LDR, the photoresistor. That changes the resistance uh, as it's coupled to ground through this 10K pot which acts as a kind of a depth or wet-dry setting. And then over here we have the LM386 audio amplifier in its usual configuration, just like the last one I built in one of those hacks way back when. So there's the whole thing. And you can also see this on the website, on the project page. I decided to give this a try with the old uh, toner transfer. This is a piece of photo paper with my circuit printed on it, two passes through the printer. If you're really careful you can get the registration right on and two passes gives me more toner to transfer onto the copper. And I cleaned my piece of copper that I had laying around, it got a little oxidized. Uh, sandpaper kind of puts too deep of a scratches kind of thing in there and this one had been hit with a little bit of sandpaper before but I didn't want to abrade it too much this time so I used uh, a sponge with a kind of a scrubby Scotch-Brite type pad on it and some toothpaste and it worked quite well. Did a really good job. Just the mild abrasive of the toothpaste took off the layer of oxidation. So now I'll clean this with some alcohol and some acetone and then transfer everything onto it and see how it comes out. Not perfect, but not too bad. Uh, there's a few little traces missing here and there, but I've got a etch-resistant pen I can go over all of this with and then throw it in the etchant bath and it should come out just fine. Well, it's been about 8 or 10 minutes. Let's uh, see how we're looking like here. Actually, the side that is facing down will etch a little bit quicker. Gravity has a lot to do with it, whatever is on the top tends to go last. Well, there we go. We're all set, ready to rinse this thing off. I added a few uh, little things of my own there. Keep on hacking. All rinsed, all dried off. Now we can get that toner and that ink off from there with a little bit of acetone. Makes a quick work of that. Since I based everything off from the whole spacing that's on a perf board, I can use that as a guide to uh, drill my holes for the two 8-pin uh, dip chips. So let's get one hole drilled as an index. Now that I've got that hole drilled, I can use a little header pin to index it, line it up on my board and then use the perf board as a guide to drill the holes so I know that the 8 pin dip will fit perfectly. There's my holes. Not exactly perfect, but they're close enough. They'll solder into those traces just fine. Okay, time to drill all the rest of the holes, so here we go. Watch carefully because I'm pretty fast at this. Whew! 
Told you I was fast. Okay, my favorite part of a project is when I get to do this, put all the components onto the printed circuit board. So I'm going to take everything off from my breadboard and follow my printed out guide here and just basically transfer everything from there to here. However, I have learned with other projects, it's a good idea to use little uh, sockets for your 8-pin dips. If a problem occurs, you can just pull out the chip and replace it. I've had stuff soldered in where the chip went bad and it's a real pain in the butt to take the chip out. So this board is going to get two of these, one for the 386 and one for the 555. So here we go. Hold on to your soldering irons. soldered on the board. Cut the chips in place. Now we just need to wire up the externals and get them mounted in the box. Alright, finally it's in the box. Let's turn it on. There's a little blinky light. Let's turn up the volume. Hey, it works. This is the depth knob. speed on the ends are the uh, jacks there's the input jack and also a power jack that's the same 9 volt power as uh, all the other guitar effects in the world have the same polarity same size jack so it's compatible with all those uh, power supplies out there for all the other like foot stomp switches and stuff. And there's the output jack. Now let's open it up and take a look inside. As you can see, I've got the uh, circuit board all mounted up in there all nice. And everything's wired up to the box cover. I stuck a 9 volt battery in there. And that fits quite nicely. Hey, well, there's another hack down. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed building it. It was quite challenging. It took me uh, quite a bit more time than I thought it would, but it was lots of fun and well worth it. And now I've got another guitar effects box to add to the list. And it's kind of fun playing it on this tube amplifier. So if you want to build it, go to this week's Hack a Week page and you'll find a parts list and a schematic and all the usual stuff that you'll find there. And uh, until next time, keep on hacking. <laughs>